And now we'll move on to the large city category. That city's with population of 100,000 or greater. We're going to again begin by recognizing the five mayors who have received honorable mention. And again, let's hold our applause until we're, <laughs> until we're th through all five. So please again turn your attention to the video screens. And uh, the five that received honorable mention, Mayor Robert Cluck of Arlington, Texas. Mayor Frank G. Jackson of Cleveland, Ohio. John Hickenlooper of Denver, Colorado. Alan Autry of Fresno, California. Hopefully Alan is with us here. And Mayor John F. Street of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let's give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations to uh, all those mayors. And now let's talk about the five that are remaining in the large city category. So please, again, turn your attention to the screen. Listed in alphabetical order of the cities they represent are Mayor Mufi Hanneman of Honolulu, Hawaii for the Tour de Trash program, something you can imagine is very dear to my heart. Mayor uh, Jerry Abramson of Louisville, Kentucky for the Metro for the Crisis Intervention Team program. Manny Diaz of Miami, Florida for the Elevate Miami uh, uh, program. Mayor Mick Cornett of Oklahoma City for the Metropolitan Area Public Schools program. And Lois Frankel of West Palm Beach, Florida for the Kaleidoscope program. Now, uh, before we talk about who won the big award again, let's give a big round of applause to those five. And the winner of the large city, first place city for the large cities in the City Livability Awards, Mayor Manny Diaz of Miami, Florida. Now let's see some video about Miami, and then we'll hear from Manny. I grew up in poverty. I was, a, I was an immigrant. I came with uh, my mom with, uh, you know, maybe a nickel in her pocket. So from a very personal level, I lived it. I experienced poverty. When I got elected, the 2000 census uh, numbers came out uh, with Miami being the number one large city in the country in terms of uh, poverty, uh, poverty rate. So it was something that I had to get on immediately, and I did. Elevate Miami basically is a very comprehensive but collaborative effort as a city initiative to get people that are low moderate income out of poverty. I think Mayor Diaz's approach is organizing the existing resource community in a better and more effective way. A perfect example is like the earned income tax credit. 20% of the population that is eligible to receive it does not receive it. We facilitate through free tax sites to get the two together. Connecting the low moderate income resident and the small business community also to benefits that already exist. Government services like free tax preparation, individual development accounts. We also have a grant within our park system where we have free after school programming. We have arts, we have music, we have dance, we have drama within our park system. The first program that was established uh, in about 2002 was a program we called eParks. We put computers that were in use here in the city government, and we took them out and we put them in the parks. So that people can have access to computers, to the internet, and to a world of learning that they may not have available to them without Elevate Miami. It's all about attacking the digital divide. Our micro-lending program, which has been very, very successful also, there's 78,000 by last count small businesses in the city of Miami that are five employees or less. So this program actually gets them a loan from $500 up to $25,000 with a very minimal interest rate. The financial literacy component actually is attached to all the different aspects of Access Miami. How to handle best their money, how to open up a bank account, how to expand their business properly, and how to be a proper homeowner when the time comes. The first year, I want to say it was about one hundred fifty or $200,000 just to, to start with the campaign. But what's, what's occurred is that we have, through the process, been able to get a whole bunch of partners. Public-private partnerships, um, um, public-public partnerships, individuals working together. The H&R Block Partnership is a perfect example. We have a five-year agreement. We've got donations of software from Microsoft, which has been a tremendous partner to us. The school system is another one, a great partner. 
we have a VISTA partnership where we have VISTA members, they're volunteers in service to America, they're the Domestic Peace Corps. The Access Miami program collaborates at the private level, the public level, nonprofits, foundations, anybody that has the same intent and agenda that we have, we want to do business with. I think Elevate Miami is really building people up on so many different levels that it is elevating Miami. It's not just how do we address poverty, but how do we improve the quality of life for the residents of Miami so that the, the residents are better prepared to address their own issues. I'm about building things that are sustainable, you know, that'll be here after I'm gone. I feel uh, exceptionally hopeful about the way in which all of the different mayor's policy areas are beginning to demonstrate how they tie themselves together and how the dots are connected. Getting out of poverty is about creating the opportunities for someone to become self-sufficient. In the past, no one threw you a rope. As a matter of fact, they pulled the ladder up and, and let you, you know, let you hover down there. It's just that little push that all of us need in life, that rope, that hand that reaches out and pulls you up a little bit, and then the rest is up to you. Yeah, why not? No formality. I got that little push too, and that's why I'm standing here. And that's why I believe that I have an obligation to keep pushing others to get to where we have all gotten. Thank you, uh, Waste Management. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. I want uh, all of you to know that uh, for those of you who haven't applied for this award, that this is probably the hardest award there is uh, to win. And in large part, it is because all of you do such great things in all of your cities. And all those projects are reviewed by the group that decides the winner. So it is particularly very hard. I'm particularly pleased that uh, I finally got to beat Richard Daly, <laughs> who tends to get these on a regular basis. I wanted to send a message, and the message is uh, sustainability. We've been talking for the past few days during this conference about environmental sustainability. And clearly, I believe we need to think beyond that. It is a great issue for us. It's a great crisis in this world, but we also, I think, have another crisis. And just as the global problem of climate change demands a local solution, the challenges to the global, global economy demand a local response. The gap between rich and poor in this nation continues to widen, and it gets worse because our cities aren't even competing against each other anymore. It's not Miami competing against Trenton, Miami competing against Seattle. It's about Trenton competing against New Delhi, Seattle competing against Shanghai, Miami competing against Madrid. And we have an obligation to make sure that our residents, especially our kids, and the generations to come have the proper tools so that they can be competitive. Because if you think the gap is bad now, if we don't prepare these future generations, the gap is only going to get worse. And while we act to save our planet, let's continue to act to save our cities and to make sure that this gap of inequality does not widen. This program creates the building blocks for people to compete in the new global economy. That's what Elevate Miami is all about. It is our city sustainability plan. And this is an area that I know is very tough for all of us because the media always likes that five-second soundbite or ten-second soundbite from all of us saying, what are you going to do to tackle poverty? What are you going to do to cure poverty? As if there was some ten-second answer to a problem like that. But that's what the media wants. And what we need to do is we need to avoid that temptation and work on really long-term plans. And they're going to want to know what the, uh, what the uh, qualify, what, quantify the results of your plan that you started three weeks ago, because that's how the media works, and you all know that. But avoid all of that, and just stick to your guns, develop a plan, and let it become a sustainable plan. And I think in so doing, you'll guarantee the future of your cities. We can't afford to fail, because if we fail, we guarantee the failure of our cities. And if we guarantee the failure of our cities, we all know that means the failure of this country. But from what I know of all of you, I know we won't fail. So Waste Management, thank you again for recognizing this effort from our city and all of our staff and employees that have really helped uh, to put all this together. Thank you very much.